I got a fucking room of dark nuts. This sucks. Oh, jeez. This sucks. It's fine. Alright, good. We're back in business. I... I love this level. Tears of the Kingdom has been out for a whole week at this point, and I'm so happy that the Zelda community gets to have a collective time sink again. The hype has all seemed well justified on top of that, given the loose, vague reactions I've heard from friends and people I work with in the internet at large. However, I won't be talking about it today because I'm making up for time I never let myself have. Amidst this excitement, I've been getting into discussions of the series as a whole though, and while I've shared some love for the series as it's been since 1991, a big talking point for me with people has actually been the 1986 genre-defining start to the series The Legend of Zelda, a game that changed the medium even by just having the save feature, but whose influence is still felt in games now, with the likes of Elden Ring adapting ideas from it into their own slice of an open-world adventure. There's a lot of magic within this golden cartridge, and a big aspect I'll be talking about in today's episode that is the return of I Love This Level, the show where I break down my favorite sequences and levels in a game, is part of that magic. It's my preferred starting point and the gateway to the waters that is level 3, aka the Manji. That magic comes in the form of the loose freedom the game offers you from the start. While a very common thing nowadays, and even a design approach brought back into the Zelda series via Breath of the Wild, which I'd argue is implemented even more robustly, you may not be able to fight Ganon from the start, and the game has a few more natural roadblocks to keep you from tackling certain dungeons before others. It at least gives you more freedom in waves. The first three dungeons in particular are all pretty interchangeable from each other in regards to the order you can do them, which in turn can evolve the order you tackle each dungeon as a whole. For example, this is my preferred way to tackle the dungeons, and this is how I tackled the dungeons in the Basic Boy run I did on the channel a few years back. Now fun fact about the name of the dungeon, a manji, which is what the map is a symbol of, I know that it looks like something else entirely, but it's not, it's a manji, and is a symbol or character used across other aspects within Eastern culture that don't have really negative connotations. It's honestly pretty fucked up how one group of raging dickholes decided to ruin a symbol for all of eternity. Dungeon 3 is an interesting turning point in context of the original layout, though. It's green-covered walls that even alter Link's look slightly due to the limited color palette of the NES, houses the raft, an item that expands your horizons and is the key to the next dungeon, also to some treasures across the main map. That pivot point also comes with the introduction to easily the most notorious and frustrating enemy, especially in large groups, the Dark Nut a swordsman whose seemingly sporadic shifts can really switch you up. On top of that, their front-facing defense gives their sudden turns this element of fear. Having rooms of them along the road to the raft lead to what is initially a great first real test at combat. At this point in the game, if you didn't start here, you have a few hearts and maybe even a certain ring if you decided to grind up for it. When visiting it earlier, sure, it's a pretty decent challenge, but it gives you ample practice with the combat swiftly out the gate that even makes the first two dungeons a little bit more of a cakewalk. I'd argue getting used to them sooner rather than later can help be ready for the difficulties ahead. There's also a nice hint here that leads you to your first sword upgrade for the rough road as well. It's another element that gives this dungeon that transitional feeling. One of the biggest reasons I like playing this dungeon first is the fact that I consider the boss here, Manhandler, much easier to deal with than the first two. While much more mobile than the borderline stagnant Aguamentis in the first dungeon and predictable Dodongos in the second, Manhandler is kneecapped by bombs. It can take one to two bombs to destroy him if you chase him right and you're on your way. Honestly, I think comparatively, given how much of a journey this dungeon is to have a boss so easy, is maybe even a little disappointing. Yeah, if you don't have bombs, it's a bit more challenging because he gets pretty quick, but you have six to eight shots to really get them down. It's a pretty cool design though, on the sandy backdrop with the green border looks great. Really pops and lets Link get washed away a bit more given the palette switch up. And admittedly, it's still a harder boss than Goma. Now it's Goma time. There you go.
While I've talked a lot about Dungeon 3, there's a lot of magic still in this game. I obviously also love Dungeon 5 because it's pretty close to Dungeon 3, both in look and the fact that the boss is a pretty big weakness, the gambling game is such a simple delight, and the moblins that give you money are a nice little secret in the overworld. This, The other secrets and ways the items integrate into the world exploration, like using the flute to uncover Dungeon 7, which also needs the meat you've got to buy from a shop, is pretty cool. The Ganon fight itself, honestly, is actually pretty neat in Zelda 1-2. This game really fucking rips, to be honest. And if you don't know, now you know. And those are a lot of the reasons why Dungeon 3 is my favorite dungeon in Zelda 1. Uh, did you Do you like Dungeon 3? What's your favorite dungeon in Zelda 1? Have you ever played Zelda 1? If you haven't, play it. It's, a, it's a, like a benchmark game still. Like, it's incredible how great Zelda 1 is. And, like, if I can champion anything about Zelda, like, one of the my myriad of reasons why it's one of my favorite game series is because, like... It really doesn't miss much. It's a pretty consistently strong series. And, I mean, it, right down to its beginning, man. I don't know. Did you like this? Did you not? If you did, give it a like. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. On screen now, I've been playlists. You got my Zelda 1 playthrough where I did a basic boy run where I played through it with three hearts, a green tunic, and a wooden sword. I got cash boys, because why not? Something else YouTube thinks you'll like. And the subscribe button. Click one if you haven't. Yeah, I drop two to four vids a week, depending on what I got going on. Thank you for watching. I've been Viral Rack. You guys are good days, last in situations, and I'll see you another day.